many athletes who avoid resistance training, even coaches, try to avoid a, a resistance training with their athletes because they think if you're a basketball player and you work like uh, you do exercise training, that might make you rigid or stiff and it will affect your technique. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Well, generally speaking, no, it is not true. Um, I'll tell you the exception when it might slightly be true. But let me first start off by saying that this idea was for the most part, you know, uh, understood to be false um, 20 years ago. In other words, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you would hear it more, much more often. People would say that you'd become muscle bound, you'd become stiff, right? You'd be, you would lose your touch, right? Um, but in the last 20 years, we've seen a lot of athletes, including golfers. Tiger Woods is a perfect example. I mean, he's gotten himself very muscular. I, I almost hate to use him as an example because he's had back problems. Mm -hmm. So he's golfing less good than he used to. So some people might think it's, it's unrelated. But we know now, I mean, basketball players lift weights, tennis players lift weights. I mean, you know, it's, it is pretty common now. Pretty much every strength coach, I mean, every uh, athletic coach knows that strength training improves performance for athletes, for competitive athletes, whether it's basketball or bowling or baseball, basketball, soccer, whatever. Um, now, there are some things like strength to weight ratio. So for example, if you increase your weight because you have more muscle mass and you increase it substantially, that has to be offset by a, 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 the right amount of increase of strength. So if you increase your weight because your muscle mass is bigger, but you didn't proportionally increase your strength, then you might be a little slower on the field. And that's bad if you need super fast running or endurance running, okay? Now, having said that, I'll say it's, it's not easy to increase your muscle mass weight very much, right? The average person who lifts weights, if they're lucky, they might increase two or three pounds of weight, five pounds of weight in a year, especially if they don't do exclusively weight training. Mm -hmm. So usually that's not the case. The other thing where it might affect you a little bit is that the body tends to adapt to the environment that you expose it to. Um, and so if you do strictly endurance activity, then you don't have as much power. Uh, by absolute power, we mean the ability to do heavy weight, few reps, or even one rep. That's called absolute power. So. If you train for absolute power regularly, then the muscle adapts for that and loses some of its endurance, mm -hmm. okay? In fact, you can even measure this in a way because when we look at a chicken, a chicken has breast meat and the breast meat is white. And the reason it's white and not dark like the thigh meat is because it doesn't have the mitochondria, it doesn't have the myoglobin, it doesn't have the aerobic metabolism that the thigh and the leg muscles do because the thigh and the leg muscles of a chicken are used to having it walk, 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 walk all day long. Occasionally, it flies across the hen coop, but doing so requires a lot of force because the body's heavy, the wings are small, right? So it has adapted the pectoral muscles to an anaerobic metabolism and the thigh muscles to an aerobic. But if you were to take those thigh muscles and train it like the pecs, it would start to turn white it would start to lose its myoglobin and, mito and, 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 and mitochondria, and it would start to lose its color. And if you train the chest meat in the opposite way with endurance, it would start to take, get darker. It would start to take on characteristics of an, an, of an aerobic metabolism, and it would add mitochondria and, my, and myoglobin, right? And so that's proof that you can actually train a muscle away from one thing and toward another. So let's just say you're a soccer player, and you need a lot of leg endurance, okay? It would be a mistake for you to go in the gym and do power training with your legs because your legs would lose endurance and that would hurt your game. But something else that's sort of interesting is that let's just say you know enough not to do that. So you keep doing your running and your endurance with, with your legs, but you say, but I want my upper body to be bigger. So you strength train your upper body and your muscles of your upper body get bigger. Your pecs, your lats, your shoulders, your arms get bigger. Okay. That could be a problem on the field for two reasons. One is because you've probably increased your weight some, right? But more importantly is the body is a system. So there's a systemic effect. Something in the legs acknowledges 
that something else going on somewhere else is requiring more power and less endurance. And so it starts to lose a little bit of its power and gain, excuse me, a little bit of its endurance and gain some power, even though you're not training the legs that way. Mm -hmm. The body tends to unify things, right? This is what cross-education is all about. This is why I can train my left arm and my right arm will get five, eight percent of the benefit of, that, of working my left arm when my right arm is in a cast and it's broken, for example, right? So the body senses what everything else is doing, all right? So in those cases, you can modify how much weight training you can get away with. But generally speaking, if you're a tennis player, you're a basketball player, doing high repetition weights, um, uh, weight training with relatively moderate weights will most likely improve your performance on the field, especially if you continue doing the skill training alongside it. And the type of uh, exercise to choose is important? Well, yeah, if you, you obviously want to improve the strength of the movements that you do in your sport, right? So if you're a pitcher, right, and you're going to do forceful internal rotation of this humerus, you're going to want to simulate the resistance training so the muscle that causes that movement is stronger, right? If you're a soccer player, your quadricep, right, is going to need some power. Anything that you work, if you're a shot putter, you know, simulating those motions will help your sport. Mm -hmm. But you, that doesn't mean that it replaces the skill training. You still have to do the skill training because a lot of that has to do with timing and gyroscopic. So you have to do them both. Okay. So break 20 don't, don't fit in the equation. Right. That's right. Break 20. Well, let me put it to you this way. Break 20 is designed to do what each muscle does best. Right. So the one best exercise for the pecs is what it does best. And in that sense, strengthening all the muscles of your body will enhance your sport, right? So if you do the break 20 or you do one best exercise as best as you can with your facilities, access to the facilities you have, you can do those 20 and improve everything. Improve your physique, improve the way you feel, improve the way you, 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 you do chores, improve the way you do your sports. But they wouldn't necessarily cover the bases that are specific to the things you want to improve. It work hand in hand. Yeah, so let's just say that you are a boxer, okay, and you need to do forceful punches, right? Well, that involves your pecs. So yes, having done the chest exercise that's in the break 20 and nothing else will improve your punching, right? But it wouldn't be bad to also do, if you're that kind of athlete, motions that help you do exactly what you do in your sport. So. A lot of times you see someone with a pair of dumbbells and they're punching with the dumbbells. Well, guess what? This dumbbell is wanting to go down, not back. So your forward movement with it isn't being opposed. What you'd be better off doing is taking a pair of cables or elastic band that are coming from behind you and having the forward movement be opposed by something that goes in the opposite direction, not something that goes in a different direction. When you're in the ring and you're boxing, you're not encountering any downward fall of the gloves. Right? So yes, just the weight of your arm, of course. But if you want to be a more forceful puncher, then you're going to want to simulate that movement with an opposing resistance that goes the opposite direction. That's one of the principles described in my book, opposite position loading. You want the muscle to be coming to be positioned opposite the resistance. The resistance to be going in the opposite direction of your movement. Okay. Yeah. It's sensible, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much.